Being a nail stylist, even a DIY one, requires a few investments in equipment, and they typically aren't cheap either. At least if you're trying to make a good investment into equipment that is going to last years, not months. Some of the machinery that you most likely will purchase as a nail stylist, especially a gel nail stylist, are curing unit, dust collector, and e-file. And these are in the order of priority. Curing unit, dust collector, e-file. Any one of these machines, at least from a trusted, long-standing brand, can start about $150 and go up to $400. Again, if you wanna invest in something that's going to last you years, not just months. And let me just say that I've never really been sticker shy about buying the most expensive option, sometimes more than once. Hey, a girl's gotta treat herself once in a while and I don't buy designers, so what better investment than one that goes right into the thing that makes my living, aka my business. So I went shopping for you, so you don't have to spend the big bucks in <laughs> trialing and error. I have here the Animoni and the Valentino dust collector. The Animoni retails for $370 and the Valentino without additional filters retails for approximately $350. The Valentino is made in Taiwan, which is known for having quality electrical equipment like that comparable to those of Japan. And the Animoni or Anemone is made in South Korea. So there you go, if you wanted to know their place of origin. And South Korea is also known for having like superb technology or equipment. In today's video, we'll use them to go over seven factors to consider to help you make the right investment and ultimately choose a dust collector that checks all your preferences. Let's dive in. Hey there and welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsanails.com and I help you start and build a thriving business as an independent nail stylist. If you're interested in growing with me, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing. Quick disclaimer, this is an independent review and I have bought both machines myself. Neither one was sent to me for free. All right, let's start with the funnest factor of them all when buying a dust collector or anything really. And that is factor number one, price. I always want to know the price first. Unless you know exactly from the manufacturer of anything, why they are able to offer you their products on the cheap, the good old proper, you get what you pay for will always ring true. So if I'm seeing a huge discrepancy in price between two things, both marketed as apples, I'm just going to assume that the higher price product will be the more superior of the two. And I'm going to re-reviews to validate that before purchasing it if they are available or I'm going to watch a review video like this one. So to get started with your search on selecting the best machine, keep an eye out on what everyone is using and raving about. Sure, because that means that it's tried and true, right? And you can, it probably lives up to the high, basically. But then look at the price. Decide whether that's in your budget now or not. And if not, look forward to making that investment later as you save up for it. Here's something that has truly worked out for me. And that is buying the best knockoff of the original thing that I want. And if I like it, now it has to be super comparable to the item that you actually want for this to work, then I'll go ahead and buy the premium or original version once I've tried the knockoff knockoff version for a little while. Just to give you a quick example, this little chain ring here is by Bettina Goldstein, a celebrity nail artist of Mexican heritage turned high-end jewelry designer. I know, look at her. Well, of course I wanted to support and I also wanted in in the cute little chain ring, right? But at about $250 and knowing how uncomfortable jewelry can be at times, I bought a cheapy version, don't let her know, at $20, $30. And I absolutely enjoyed that piece. It was so comfortable. So then I felt more comfortable making the investment when the time was right. I think it was Black Friday, cause if you love something, let it go. If it goes on sale, 
buy it, right? Seriously, one of the cutest, most comfortable ring ever, not sponsored. I haven't bought a ring since. Just let it stand out on its own. So use this principle after today's video if you wanna prepare yourself further before making a big drop on a dust collector or any other big ticket item. Buy like the best cheapy version and see if you like that before you invest in the real deal. Factor number two, design. Dust collectors typically come angled for clients who wrist support and others like the anemone come flat. Whether or not that matters to you will depend on your table setup. Maybe you have an armrest that just fits right here with this collector or maybe not and so you need a version that's flat for that case, right? So I just repurchased this Valentino. I've actually had, had like four Valentinos and not because they break. I just you know, now as an educator, I want to try different things and different models. So when the new one comes out, I get that. Or I see something trending, I want to buy that and whatnot. So that's why we're here with our fourth Valentino. So yes, I think I've had the narrow one. Um, I've had the one that goes into the table and then I've had um, the flesh mount, just FYI. So I think after repurchasing the Valentino, which has always have had this little armrest here, I kind of did miss this feature. I find that it brings the hand closer to the capture source right when it's leaning right over it. And if you don't have an armrest, it serves as one also. So that's a cool feature. Now, on the other hand, the beauty about a flat unit is that you can set your art products on it if you're working with things like chrome and glitter powders, which you wanna keep out of your breathing zone in your eyes, of course. Also, if you're using it on pedicures, so if you're able to take this over to your pedicure section, the flat unit um, sits nicely on your lap. Not very common to use it for pedicures, but it can help or you can use it for that if you're not doing pedicures like all the time and you don't want to buy like a whole equipment for that. Another design feature you may want to note is whether or not the unit is acetone resistant. In this case, both the Anemone and the Valentino are. Factor number three, size. I would definitely look for a dust collector with a large capture area. So this grill area here. I know that the capture area should be small for a more direct and strong suction, but there are machines out there that have two capture sources within the machine. So keep that in mind. And yes, although you want to be very pinpointed as to file off your product directly over the location of the suction or where the fan is, all nail techs have some hand filing to do right. And for that reason, I personally prefer a large grill or capture source area. Now, one thing I wanna mention is the weight. If you are familiar with any of the Valentino products, uh, at least the dust machines, you know that this was metal before, or I'm telling you now, it was metal, so it was really heavy. Now, that was a cool feature for me because it kind of weighed the machine down and it didn't move everywhere. They have been able to mitigate that by adding these little steps here. So that's fine. And it's super lightweight. Kid you not, when I picked up the box, I really thought I was going to do this like maneuver because I was expecting a Valentino machine, which I know to be really like hefty kind of thing. And to my surprise, I can pick it up with one hand. That was not the case. I mean, even the one that was narrow was much heavier. With that being said, the anemone or anemone is, I mean, I can still pick it up with one hand. It's a little bit heavier, but it's still very manageable, very portable. It is heavier than this though, okay? Overall, I am satisfied with both the anemone and Valentino's grill size. As you can see, it's pretty much the same there, right here. Factor number four, features. Most nail dust vacuums have a cord to them, like, you know, they have to be plugged in. Now, there are very special occasions when they don't. And actually, the Anemone is one of the only machines that I know that can go cordless, which is pretty awesome, if you ask me. Um, everything else that I know has a cord, and that has to do with innovation, technology, and all of that. And so some countries just have not going on like that, right? If that's all they manufacture, like they're really good in Korea for manufacturing e-files and things like that, then they might also have the key to making things go cordless. This is so powerful, even though it's cordless, there has been videos of people putting this on the wall and it will stick. Haven't tried that with this. I really don't wanna damage my $300 units. They weren't sent to me for free <laughs> again. I did pay for them, so but they are very strong. I've seen the videos. Now, cord or no cord, what do you choose, Paula? 
if you've been a loyal subscriber, I've told you before that with a cordless option, you'll always be paying a premium for that feature. Sometimes these rechargeable batteries are very expensive to the manufacturer and they're just passing down that cost to you. Also, eventually these batteries die down and in some cases you can still use it with the cable. Thankfully, I'm going on almost two years now with the anemone and all good, albeit I use it only on myself and my models. So only go cordless if it absolutely benefits you. For example, if you're a mobile nail tech or you're moving from different areas in your salon, then a cordless option may be worth the investment for you and it's a feature, again, that's just worth the money. As much as I've always enjoyed cordless nail things, I do truly believe in the power, get it, of having a cable. So I actually have both a cordless and corded option for every nail equipment that I own, not just my dust collectors. And I recommend that if you own cordless anything, you also later invest in a corded option. But if you don't, no worries. Again, you can still use the machine with a cable if your battery has lost its capability to recharge and allow you to go cordless with that unit. And in my experience, all of my equipment that is cordless, all of these equipment can still be operated while they're plugged in, whether that's your EFA, your curing unit, or your dust collector. Another thing about cordless units, according to the anemone documents, is that it is better to continuously charge them than letting them lose power completely and then fully recharge them every time. Apparently it's good for the battery. Again, that's what the documents say. So if you have any of these cordless units, whether it's that or a curing unit or e-file, it's better to keep them at full charge or constantly charging versus just letting them die down. Factor number five, filters. Choosing a dust collector based on what filters it uses is a wise decision. Maybe, especially post 2020, you want a dust collector with the option that allows you to toss out each filter after every client. Or maybe you are just a DIYer and so you don't mind not changing your filter every single time. Filters are very unique to every unit and you will have to decide what is the most economical option for you before purchasing that unit. And the compatibility is important here. If you don't put the right filter, you're just not gonna get the best suction from that machine. If you're using a dust collector that reuses filters, do make sure to clean it after every client or every time you use it for maximum suction because if there is dust particles in there, then it's obviously obstructing the power of the suction. Another thing to consider with filters is where they are placed. If your filter is over the grill, then the suction power may decrease somewhat versus if the filter is designed to go under the grill. And if you're like, what's a grill, Paula? It's not your it's this, okay? So these are magnetic in both instances. This one comes off rather easily. <laughs> this one, I, uh, you do have to kind of like pry it off a little bit, but it does come off. I will show you. The unit will not operate if, mine needs to be clean. The unit will not operate if you remove this because obviously safety reasons, the fan is like right there, okay? So again, with the anemone, the filter goes over this with the Valentino. The filter is underneath here. You pop off the grill and here is that filter and there is the fan. All right. Again, if your filter is over the grill, then suction power may decrease somewhat versus if the filter is designed to go under the grill. I did find a difference between these two units, even though I like them very much, the Valentino did seem to capture better overall, like just cleaner, because the filter is under the grill. So something to consider. So here's the math. But before we do that, if this video has been super helpful thus far for you, can you go ahead and give it a little thumbs up? It helps the channel oh so much. So. With the Valentino, each individual filter is about $11 and their notes say to use or switch every two weeks, okay? So every time, every filter, you have to switch it out every two weeks if you're fully booked. So if you worked in two weeks, 10 to 12 days in those two weeks, using that filter per day will cost you about a dollar per day. Pretty affordable for a business. Just remember to clean it. So you will either flip it over a trash bin and kind of like, whack it <laughs> or you can get your hand vacuum if you have one of those like portable hand vacuums and vacuum out the dust from 
vacuuming the vacuum, vacuuming the dust from the dust vacuum. Does that make sense? But you want to do that so that you have like maximum suction per client, right? If you work more than that, you're going to have to do that. Maybe instead of 14 days, you're going to have to do that 12 days, 10 days, depending on your use. You're just going to have to do the math. Okay. Do note that the Valentino filters come in a five pack. So upfront, every time you need filters, that is approximately a $50 or $55 investment. The filters are carbon filters, which is supposed to help with like antimicrobial properties and also like fumes from your products. So if you're using acrylic, it may capture a small amount of that odor. Now with the anemone, the filter sheets are sold at $22 for 50 of them. So each sheet costs you 44 cents per client. If you see six clients per day, you are spending $2.64 approximately in filters per day again. But remember, if you're DIY, your cost per filters is much lower because you can reuse them, they say, up to two to three times. If you're doing DIY, all you would do is just ouch, take your paper filter and tap it in the trash bin and that's that, put it back on there, okay? Factor number six, noise level. This is another deal breaker for some, but all units now are very comparable in noise level. So I wouldn't shop so much of like, which one is the loudest or the quietest. That's just an extra spec or feature. Because just like you've never met a silent cleaning vacuum or blow dryer, you're just never gonna get a silent nail dust collector either. That's just the reality, okay? Sometimes a high noise level is also an indicator of the strong suction power. Between the two here, surprisingly, the Valentino is the slightly more quiet option when it is turned at full capacity. Let me see if you can hear. Oh, here we are. lowest right there that's as quiet as just pretty quiet pretty quiet and I do remember I've had various generations of this machine so I do remember it being kind of loud <laughs> okay so here's the animal I'm gonna put it right approximately the same area where my mic is ready set Full capacity. That is significantly louder and this is its lowest. It's really quiet at its lowest, just a, just a notch louder on the quietest setting but yes at the full capacity it is quite loud compared to the Valentino here now what can be happening is that because this has a filter sheet that goes over it let me show you okay so here's the sheet that goes on it it's quite thick actually this is like a cloth type velvety material here and this is the part that goes on the machine and what that does it just helps it stick on as you can see it doesn't fall off because of that velvety thing finish on that um this right here feels i don't know plasticky um i've seen this material before but this is the part that goes up okay and as you can see it doesn't move and if you turn it this way the incorrect way it does move and that gets annoying when you're working on your client so this sticks on without you even turning on the suction or the power on which is pretty awesome now like i said this is relatively a thick layer of paper you will need more suction to go through that grill and pick up the dust so that may be the reason why this is louder because it just needs more maybe rotations per minute. I don't have that information. I have only this here, all these details for it, if you're interested. 
but unless here in Korean it says rotations per minute, then you can comment below. <laughs> That's why I think it's a little bit louder for that reason, because it's got to kind of go through that paper to capture that dust, my guess. Factor number seven, power suction, which we kind of just alluded to. I believe the power of the suction is based on rotations per minute plus other factors. Wattage has maybe very little to do with it. They do offer what the wattage is for these in their documents and on the website. Just like wattage in your curing unit is not the determinant factor for a proper cure, I would assume that the higher the RPM of the fan in your dust collector has some contribution to the power of the suction, but it's not the end all be all like our EFA machines in our curing units that's just part of it it's a collaboration of all of those units right uh yeah i'm gonna guess that there's more to it than just rpm but if you want to know uh that valentino does specify that it has a like 35,000 rpm i can do a bit more research for you on that and when i have that information i can update you on the comments below of about what other factors matter with the fan now the valentino also states something about their fan being like exceeding or meeting the requirements for certain something so I would just post that here in the video also. So these were the seven factors to help you choose a curing unit. Whether you go with this or that or something else. Again, these are price, design, size, features, filters, noise level, and power suction. Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy shopping. And if you are interested in either one of these two units, don't forget to check out the description box below for our discount codes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.